I find it very difficult to to predict or think of a future and because in a sense I'm have now been convinced that scientific advances are good for science but they may not be good for pharmacology in terms of what I think is the purpose of pharma, i.e. drug discovery. I say this because uh, I have a feeling that a lot of the present day, which everybody agrees with, lack of new chemical entities um, is because drug companies have molecularized their drug discovery programs and I accept the fact that it's the only way in which you can screen 5,000 compounds in 55 minutes um, is with something like a array of DNA or RNA array, whatever the sort of thing it is. Unfortunately, it appears right now that good pharmacological science or good science doesn't always survive being moved up one layer in complexity. That's to say, from an isolated receptor into just, say, the whole cell. And, uh, of course, when you start going from a cell to a congregation of cells, like a lump of tissue, that is something else. And then, of course, you go up into something slightly bigger. There may be an organized organ, and then, and then. So all these layers, All these layers of complexity it comes back to what, what I call pharmacology being a dirty science. We have finally to do it in a very complicated environment. And the cleanest, best, nicest science is true sometimes only in that environment. It doesn't mean it doesn't happen in a, in a bigger environment, it just means it gets overtaken by what all the other stuff that's going on. It's like you can hear it in the single cell, you put it along with the other, it gets drowned out. You can't hear the message, and it gets lost. Um, and so the big advance, no doubt, in recent years has been the whole human genome project and the molecular biology which allows you to do some beautiful science, one really good science. But uh, people and the companies bought into this the idea that you give me the gene and I'll give you the drug. Uh, and in fact, all, our, all of our diseases, most of our diseases, we'll be able to find genes which are relevant to them and therefore we'll, you know, it'll, it'll all be done. Well, it just hasn't happened. Um, <clears throat> I mean, this is the difficulty I find myself in, is that the science is so good, but the outcome, it's difficult to see the outcome being as good as the science. And I don't know why, except this problem of complexity. We haven't, I mean, people now invent stuff called systems biology, as far as I know. Um, it is trying to reproduce, shall we say, on a computer, the complexity that we observe in a set of cells, whole organ, tissue, whatever it might be. Um, but I, I really don't know how effective that can be. I, mean, I, I, I plain don't know. I, that's not a value judgment. It's ignorance. Um, so that, that, that it would seem to me that the forward march of science has to be not the way that we have been going, which has been a reductionist, because that's the way the cleanest science gets done. You know, a single body problem. 
is great. You can solve that. Two or three bodies, you're lost. Even with mathematics, quantum mechanics, you can't do it. Yeah? Um, <clears throat> even with the big computers, it just, just doesn't work. So we have to develop science in a way that allows us to reproduce the complexities of the real tissue and the real body. And I don't know whether those complexities are reasonably approachable even by computing techniques when we can reproduce them to a great extent by you know whole organ, whole animal, whatever it is, experiments.